Welcome to Williams Grove Speedway TV, the new video site for everything Williams Grove. Subscribers will truly love the video experience available each time you log in. From recent full coverage races to classic shows from the past, this site is powered by Will and Steve Gigas of Sports Plus Video and Lynn Schaefer Video Productions from one of the world's largest dirt track video libraries. Race highlights, driver spotlights from past and present, historical track video stories spanning over 70 years of racing. Here's just a taste of what's coming your way for the low subscription price of $3.95 a month. That's only 99 cents a week. With a lap of 16. Point one four two, a brand new track record. Well, Brian Household has showed me the second lap up there in the tower, 16-140, and I, I mouthed the words, are you sure? <laughs> tries the low side, Kreitz coming after him. I was surprised when he went down there and, and I just turned under him and got a run on him and I mean I know my right rear hit his left front, it's, you know, that's my track in front of him and you know most of the time I'd give him that lane but uh, you know not for 10,000 to win, it was my track, it's nothing he would have never done to me. Kenny Weld, charismatic Jan, always with the fans. Jan and Kenny were two of the best drivers racing ever knew and will never be forgotten. Jan in the Boger 99, Weld in the Wiker 29. It seems like only yesterday. Meanwhile, Casey Kane looking to hold off Craig Delansky for the final transfer spot. Delansky puts the wicked slider and they make contact and Kane is out of the ballpark. Craig Delancey punted Casey Kane, and Kane went end over end out of the ballpark in turn four. Trouble on the front stretch. Buffo <laughs> into the lead at the start. Trouble, double, flip. Two cars flipping wildly between one and two. Well, we're just walking around talking to other guys. Uh, you know, we struggled pretty much beginning the nine, you know. See how they're feeling, uh, see if they can give me a little bit of advice. And just the whole time in the back of my mind, thinking about what we had to do to pick up the pace. But it's basically just basic conversation with all the other drivers. Moran and Clanton again, side by side as they head down into turns number three and four. We take a moment to remember an era that is gone with the dust in the wind. Junior Ritchie in an early version of the Roy Morrill 880. Paul Weidman. Jonestown's Leroy Felty. Bloomsburg's Johnny Crawford. Jimmy Schaefer from Harrisburg rules the Flathead Division over at Silver Spring. Neil Haight in the original Bud Grimm Ford powered number 88. Ray Tilly, Ralph Smith. Fortunately, several old timer associations are working hard restoring a number of these beautiful machines. The York County Racing Club's fearless leader, Paul Miller. We couldn't find a name, but we had to include the number 69. Frankie Thompson, one of the best. Well, if you watched me run that heat race, you'd tell I'm not doing a very good job of adjusting yet, but um, we're, we're getting there. We just got to run more laps. It's, um, it's been a while since I've uh, run here at the Grove, and this is a pretty cool place. I mean, you kind of get nervous when you just get here, let alone when you get in the car. Macri in front of them. Reamer side by side with Dewey's. He won't give up the lead last lap. Reamer to the outside. Reamer to the outside. Dewey's down low. Dewey squeezes under Macri. He's got the lead on the back stretch. Oh, yeah, the boy drove a hell of a race. I didn't know he was such a talker. I think we might run him for a political office. <laughs> and Freddie shoved underneath me there when I was trying to get by, and, and, and um, you know, we stepped the pace back up. But, you know, he, he's turned into a big, pretty good racer, you know. Lance DeWeese. Lance DeWeese. 